his worry was this sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam and every sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam should come into people's life. And then he was doing his best to make sure that he finds each and every sunnah, not only the well-known sunnahs, now we all know about this, we know about the hat, we know about the dress, but there are certain things that really even ulama, even mashayikh, even muftiyani kiram never paid attention to it. But this man, since his worry was the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, the way of life of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, so everything that he used to do, he used to find the sunnah way of doing it and goes into each and every detail of how exactly Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam performed it. Let me give you an example. He's in Atikaf for the whole month of Ramadan. There is a hadith in Sahih al-Bukhari. Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, once he performed the Atikaf of the whole month of Ramadan, how did he do it? He did the Atikaf of the ten days, first ten days, and he said to Sahaba Ridwanullahi alayhi majma'een, I did the atikaf of these first, first 10 days of Ramadan, hoping that I would find Laylatul Qadr in these 10 nights of Ramadan, but I did not find Laylatul Qadr in these first 10 nights of Ramadan. Therefore, I will be doing the atikaf of the second 10 days of Ramadan, and whoever was in atikaf with me for the first 10 days should do the atikaf of the second 10 days of Ramadan too. So he did the itikaf of the second ten days of Ramadan. And now he says to them after that ended, that we did the itikaf of these ten days of Ramadan, but we did not find Laylatul Qadr in these nights either. Therefore, we are going to do the itikaf of the last ten days of Ramadan. And then he found Laylatul Qadr in the last ten days of Ramadan. Ask the Mashiach who do atikaf during Ramadan and they do it for the whole Ramadan. How do they do it? And then ask Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi how he used to do it. He writes a letter to one of his students. I'm in atikaf at this time. And I normally perform the atikaf and sit in atikaf for the whole month of Ramadan. But it's my habit. I don't make the intention for the whole month of Ramadan at once. For each 10 days I make a separate intention because this was the way of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How deep this man is going? That since Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, first thing he made the intention, intention of first 10 days, so therefore I first thing I make the intention of only first 10 days. Then after that I make the intention of the second 10 days. Then I make the intention of the last 10 days, so that I'm following that sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. In his old age, he's not able to move. He cannot even talk properly. His khadim is pouring the water on him and washing his body for a wudu. He's making, uh, making the wudu for him. All of a sudden the Qadim realizes the Sheikh is getting a little upset and is looking at him, giving him a bad look. What happened? He realized he made a mistake. Sheikh does not have teeth. Sheikh does not have teeth. So when the Qadim was rinsing his mouth, he did not use the miswak thinking there are no teeth. But Sheikh is saying, looking at him, that you need to use the miswak because that is the sunnah of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. So what if I don't have teeth? Look at these ways. I mean, a person who's so much in love with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He was very sick. Not able to even sit for a few minutes. It's time for Salat al-Fajr. All the khuddam are worried. How is he going to perform it? But he says, let's do this Salah. So they made him sit. One of the khuddam starts leading the salah. In his salah he recited two surahs of Quran, short surahs. 
I don't exactly remember. There are students that may of Shaykh al-Hadith who may remember, Khulafa who may remember, it might be that Jaya Nasrullah Tabatida, one of these. So he recited two short surahs. After he finished his salah, Shaykh called him and said, if you wanted to recite two short, short surahs, had you recited, قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ الْفَلَقْ and قُلْ أَعُوذُ بِرَبِّ النَّاسِ we would have got the reward of the sunnah also, because once Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa recited these two surahs in Salat al-Fajr. In that age, in that situation, and a person is thinking of these things. And because of these situations, because of these situations, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala connected him to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in such a way that the whole world witnessed for it. The whole world witnessed for Shaykh al-Hadith rahmatullahi alayhi having connection with Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. How? In which manner? I will tell you now. Any part of the world when you say the name Shaykh al-Hadith without anything added to it, without no names added to it, right away everyone thinks of Mawlana Zakariya rahmatullahi alayhi. The Shaykh of Hadith. In Medina Munawwara, he used to receive mail. Sometime that it's the whole address on the mail, this is the whole address, believe me, on the mail, Shaykh al-Hadith, Medina Munawwara. The mail is coming from different parts of the world. It gets right to him. Because they know there is only one Shaykh al-Hadith at this time. It gets right to Shaykh al-Hadith, rahmatullahi alayhi. This reminds me of Imam Baghawi, rahmatullahi alayhi. When he wrote his book, Masabih al-Sunnah, he saw Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam in his dream, telling him, أَحْيَاكَ اللَّهُ كَمَا أَحْيَيْتَ السُنَّةِ May Allah always keep your name alive the way you kept my ahadith alive. And through that dua, people just out of nowhere, people started using the title for him as Muhyus Sunnah, the one who revived the sunnah. And here we find for Shaykh al-Hadith, rahmatullahi alayhi, everyone is using the title Shaykh al-Hadith. His attachment to Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam was such. When would never start a journey. He would never travel in his life without having the approval from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And most of the time, we have a person in our gathering. Hat Mawlana Abdul Hafiz Makki, Maddazillahu al-Ali. Most of the time, he would send him, go to the Rawza Aqdas. And find out what are the instructions from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam for my journey. If he would say go, then I would go. If he would say no, I won't go. A person who would never take a step in his life without having that instruction from Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. When people used to invite him from different parts of the world, he used to tell them, I'm ready. Let me see if I get a permission to go there. One day he's sitting by Rawza Aqdas, by the grave of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. He would never dare <coughs> to go towards the front. He used to say, I have no face to show Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. I cannot go towards the front. So he used to go towards the feet of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam. And men in this old age used to do things that we with all of our physical strength at our young age are not able to do. We'll sit for hours over there without a single movement. For hours he will be sitting there. His head down, 